All right, let's see how we can fill out this table about um, shares. I've got the formula that you were talking about, which is the dividend yield formula or yield percentage formula. It's the dividend you get per share divided by the market value of the share. And that would be the answer, but they want it given as a percentage and turn anything to a percentage. You just times by 100. So that's why I've times by 100 there. And I do everything in the brackets and that's my answer. And I just throw a percent sign on the end of it because I've turned it to a percentage. For example, um, this number one here, I put 0.67 on 5.8. And uh, that would be the answer, but I need to times that by 100. Whatever that is, I whack a percent sign on the end of it. So 0.67 on 5.8 times 100, and I get 11.55, and I whack a percent sign on the end of it. So that's U down there. Okay, now that'll be the same for this one here, so I won't work it out, but it's 0.95 on 6.75 times it by 100. That's your answer and then you just throw a percent sign on the end. Now this one here is just a backwards question because they're telling you the dividend yield. Right? They're telling you 8.5% um, is the answer. So 8.5%, the dividend per share is what you're trying to find, I'll call that X. And you put that over the market value of the share and times by 100 and whack a percent sign on. So you can see that both sides of this equation that I'm trying to solve here, both sides have got a percent sign, so we can get rid of that because it's like we're timesing both sides by 100 and we can get rid of that. You can see that the 8.5 that's written there is equal to um, 100x on 7.2 because this x is being times by 100. That's one way to look at it. Or you could have divided 8.5 by 100 and just had x on 7.2 equals whatever 8.5 on 100 is. So whatever way you do that, you've got to solve this equation. You've got to solve the equation where it's got 8.5 is equal to x on 7.2 times 100. So it's, it's up to you how you're going to go about solving that. Um, but in the end, you've got 8.5 times 7.2 on 100 is equal to the thing you're trying to find. So 8.5 times 7.2 divided by 100, and I get uh, 0.612. And it's going to go for a different colour now. But 0.612, yeah, there it is, B. All right. Now this one here, I'll call that Y. That's the market value. So I'll, I'll work that out over here. They tell us that 4.5% is equal to uh, the dividend, which is 0.48 over this y, the market value. So I'm just using the formula from before, right? And um, I times that by 100 and I throw a percent sign on. So once again, I can get rid of the percent signs and say 4.5 is equal to 0.48 on y times 100. And all you're trying to do is solve an equation now where you're finding the value of y. So I might times both sides by uh, y equals 0.48 times 100. So 4.5y equals uh, 48. And then divide by 4.5. So y equals 48 divided by 4.5. It equals 10.66 uh, or 10.67 if you're going to be rounding there. Uh, that's the market share price. Let's have a look down there and see if there's a 10, yeah, there it is, D, 10.67. Okay, now, this is a really good question because um, it's got percentages that they charge for brokerage um, and that's a common thing that, that you're going to have to work out in exam questions. So it's good that you brought this one up. Um, so what are they going to charge for share transaction of $8,000? So you just got to find where that lies. Um, first of all, you've got your first $5,000 is 2.5%. How much is left? 3,000, because you've used up 5,000 of the 8,000. So you've got 3,000 left after that. So that's plus 2% of the 3,000. 
Okay, so um, just going to work out what that ever that is. Two point five percent of the five thousand plus two percent of the three thousand comes to one hundred and eighty-five dollars. And you look for that on there, and there it is there. So the next one's fourteen thousand five hundred. So it's going to just be the same thing because um, it'll be two point five percent of the first five thousand. And then you've got like another 9,500. So you don't quite get into the next bracket. So whatever that is. Now this next one, you're going to have to do 2.5% of the first 5,000. And then you're going to do 2% of the next 10,000. So that gets you up to 15,000. And then you do 1.5% of the next 10,000. So that gets up 25,000. But you've still got 5,400 left. So plus 1% of the 5,400. I won't work that out, but whatever all that works out to be, that's what the broker is going to charge. And now they're asking you, what if this person bought 35,800? Well, it's going to be um, a whole lot all over again. 2.5% of the first 5,000 plus 2% of the next 10,000 plus 1.5% of the next 10,000, which has got me up to uh, 25,000 has been used now, 10 and 10 and five. And so you wanna now get up to 35,800. So you've got another 15,800 that's at 1%. So whatever that is, all those added together is gonna to be what? this person's charged um, plus of of course that's the that's the transaction fee for it but of course this person Faringa also has to actually buy the shares for 35,800 so that's the actual share price that I'm circling but you got to add on all this stuff here for the brokerage fees so whatever all those things all in that line add up to that's what they pay for it. What profit will they make if they later sell the shares for 45,000? Now, this depends. You, you're going to have to work out the transaction fee probably for that as well. So you're going to have to um, say, well, that's what it cost them, what, what this whole line of working is, it's what it cost them. Now, if they sell it for that big amount, you're going to have uh, that plus this. This is going to be the transaction fee on the $45,000 that they're selling it for. Uh, that's $25,000 already plus another $20,000. So you got that transaction fee to sell uh, and then $45,000. So if you work out what's in that cloud, all right, this is what the situation is. She's going to get, sorry, don't work out what's in that cloud. That is the fee there in that I'm going to put in this cloud. That's the fee for selling it. So you've got to minus that fee off. So she'll get her $45,000 when she sells them, but it's going to cost her all this cloud stuff as fees. So she's going to get a certain amount of money back in, but it cost her originally all the stuff that I've got, I'm putting in here to buy them in the first place. So you've got to take that off to work out the profit. So I'll just put that in. That's what it cost her to buy the shares in the first place. So she'll get 45,000. But she'll have to get charged the fees on the 45,000. And also take off the original cost of original purchase cost. And you'll get the answer. All right, let's have a look.
what else that you had a question about. Three angles of a triangle are in the ratio 3 to 4 to 7. Find the size of the largest angle in degrees. So I'll just come back onto the page that we're working on. Okay, need to get a slight bit more room here. So, ah, killing me. Okay. Okay, so it says 3 to 4 to 7. So the key here is to add up all the parts. For any time you're dividing something up in a ratio, add up all the parts. So what's 3 plus 4 plus 7? It's 14. So there's 14 parts. Now, they're talking about the angles in a triangle. So what are the angles in a triangle add up to in total? 180 degrees. So you've got to divide the 180 degrees into 14 parts to find out what one part is worth. 180 divided by 14, you get, I'll just write um, 90 on 7, that's degrees, it's about 12.85 degrees, whatever, but that's exactly there, the 90 on 7, that's what one part is worth. You've divided it up into 14 parts, you know what one part is worth. Now, they're saying three parts and four parts and seven parts. So three parts will be worth that, four parts will be worth that, and seven parts will be worth that. Okay, so that's 270 on seven, that's 360 on seven, and that's 630 on seven. So you just work them out as best you can. Um, 270 on seven. Did it say to the nearest degree or anything like that? Let's have a look. What does it say? Uh, find the size of the largest angle in degrees. All right, so once the largest one of them, I don't have to work out all three. What's the largest one? This one here, and they want that in degrees. So what's 630 on seven? Ninety. It's 90 degrees, isn't it? And you could work out the others as well, just by doing 360 divided by 7 or 270 divided by 7. All right, good luck tomorrow.